Well, my book is about many things. It, it, it's about the pace and vigor and excitement of technological innovation in what I call digital technology. So it goes beyond computers. Computers are embedded in just about everything, but they don't look like computers anymore. So I thought digital technologies was, was a better phrase. It not only talks about the technology and how it's being used, but it talks about three kinds of issues and implications. One are social issues. What kind of life um, are we leading? What is the world like, for example, with cell phones everywhere and most people being so inclined that they can no longer get away from them, that at any point they're li liable to be called or messaged or something like that. The second set of issues are, of course, legal and policy issues. What uh, controls, for example, do we want to place on the development and deployment of self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles, which I, I personally think is a very promising technology for the future because humans seem unable to drive safely, but uh, I also feel are, are being pushed too quickly by, by industry, by governments wanting to make their towns a test bed for self-driving vehicles, uh, and by researchers who love uh, what might be described as the te technological sweetness of researching these things. And the third kind of issue um, are moral and ethical ones. So, uh, for, for example, what one that I'm about to blog about, or I've started writing the blog post, is what um, obligation does society have to taxi drivers in municipalities which have not put strong uh, limits on Uber and Lyft, which applies to most municipalities. And so we have the case in, in New York City where eight taxi drivers and people who drive vehicles around the city, uh, like taxis, in the last 15 months have committed suicide because not only has their livelihood been impacted, their revenues are, are way less, because there are now 100,000 Uber-like vehicles competing with them. But uh, if they, in fact, bought their taxi licenses when the market value was about a million dollars and now it's $200,000, they're uh, below water in the same way that if someone bought real estate at an inflated price and the market has crashed, you're below water. So they no longer have good ways to pay that off. And so eight people have committed suicide. So what? What is our moral responsibility as citizens, as a society, for, for such people? The last thing I'll say about the book is that it's organized into three parts, opportunities, risks, and choices. The first six chapters are opportunities, and in many cases, they're exciting opportunities for how digital technologies can be used to uh, facilitate digital inclusion how it can be used and is being used in education and learning, medicine and health, um, how it's being used in war and peace and politics. The second uh, set of three chapters is on risks, and this deals with what are three classical topics in this field, privacy, safety, and security. And the last section deals with choices where I feel that the uh, there's great opportunity and necessity for individuals and societies now to think about what kind of a world they want. And there, there are three chapters, one dealing with automation and jobs, one dealing with specifically with artificial intelligence and some of the issues it raises. And the last chapter, which is on lifestyle, which really covers a lot of different topics, but uh, two very important topics in it are the nature of communications where you're always connected and some of the good things and bad things about that, as well as what's happening in the digital technologies industry, where industries where there's more and more corporate concentration and power in the hands of 
what Farad Manju, the technology columnist, has called the fearsome five, that raises all sorts of issues uh, that I discuss in the book.